group by five parties. The national view, the Labour view, the Green view, the NZ First view, and the ACT view. On this side of the House, we believe that this is not an accurate representation of the diversity of thought in New Zealand, and New Zealand society's views are not being properly made in Parliament. What do we support on this side of the House? Three things. Firstly, we think that we're going to enforce a first-past-the-post system with 120 electorates which each uh, elect an independent MP. Secondly, these MPs can't be affiliated with any political parties. Thirdly, MPs will vote for the, uh, for the PM just like they put the Speaker under the status quo and the PM will then choose the Cabinet. What is our burden in today's debate? We believe that we can win if we prove that we get better government without political parties. Four points for the House today. Firstly, why MPs should be personally accountable to their voters. Secondly, why we get, a, we, why we get better lawmaking. Thirdly, why we get a better executive or cabinet. And finally, Mitch will tell you a split why this reduces partisanship in the populace. But moving on to this first principle on why principally MPs should be personally accountable. We think that under the status quo, the parliament is not selected by the people. Why is this? We think when a given political party puts forward a candidate into a given seat, it is generally determined by its constituency committees. These look like groups of small white men uh, who are mostly old. In National, this looks like a group of retired small businessmen uh, and farmers. In Labour, this looks like trade union tragics. We think that they select an MP, uh, that well, these are the people who select the MP that their party puts forward to be elected. But voters, and this is made worse when voters do not actually look at the person that they're electing, but rather the letter beside their name, whether it's L or N, they look at that, and so therefore what we get is a system where these constituency committee members are, and are deciding the makeup of our parliament. Madam Speaker, that cannot be a functioning democracy. Why is this a problem? We think that MPs have significant power, even if their voting decisions are made simply by the whips. We think MPs have the ability to question civil servants and select committees. The MPs can have the ability to be appointed to executive government. And thirdly, we think that they vote on the policy aims and outcomes of their parties in caucus. What do we get on this side of the House? On our side of the House, we see that members of Parliament are elected on their own individual merits. This means that they have to go and knock on the doors of their voters. They have to go and put things in the local press. These people have to prove themselves to the public and don't get a free ticket simply because the constituency committee has put them into this position of power. So because of this, we believe that we win on a principal ground. Yes. Uh, if all MPs are independents and represent the local, uh, local electorate, would issues of national significance be neglected in Parliament? We actually don't think that it's that bad if we get more talk about local issues because it actually gets a lot more people involved in politics because something is directly relevant to them and in their neighbourhood. So moving on to this second, uh, to this practical on why do we get better lawmaking? We think that this is incredibly important in today's debate, as the point of the legislature, the legislature is to make and pass laws that represent the country. So how do we get better lawmaking? Four ways for the House today. Firstly, we think that in individual MPs are forced to consider more legislature. We think right now in Parliament, whether an MP supports a piece of legislature or they say no to it, is decided by the party leaders or the whips. We think that this means that only the research department and political parties actually are the ones considering the merits of this policy. That cannot be an element of a functioning democracy. However, what do we see on our side of the house? We see that when 120 independent MPs consider their view, they force the government to make laws that the, pe that the people actually I want, know. and they're likely to consider the local consequences of any laws. Secondly, how do we get better lawmaking? We think that 
The second reason is that the individual MPs are far less likely to be partisan and hence are, a, are going to be able to get more law. In New Zealand, the few times that we have had this non-partisan nature of some MPs and when MPs so, have rebelled or be free or been free from their parties, we've actually got a lot better outcomes. We give you examples like Mar Marilyn Waring voting in favour of denuclearisation of New Zealand under a Muldoon government. We give you examples like national MPs voting against the party line in the 60s to a capital punishment, something that we now view as an abhorrent treatment of, bi of prisoners abolished. Thirdly, how do we get better lawmaking? We think that if they do pass bad laws, the MPs are forced to be held accountable to these laws or, uh, or they have to leave. Why is this? We think because the constituency, we think under the status quo, the constituency committees are far uh, are loath to deselect people. They like to keep the same people in power. Sure. However, voters are far more likely under our system to break from their partisanship nature and vote for someone else in a general election because it's not necessarily then saying I've completely changed my political opinion or I was wrong in the last election. It's a far easier concession for them to make and choose another MP. We think that this gives MPs incentives to make the best laws whilst they're in Parliament to keep their job in representing the views of the country. Finally, we think that we increase the diversity of thought in Parliament. We think that right now, all of the National Party, after the Christchurch attack, are voting for gun law reforms. However, if we think that there were more MPs that were actually in independent, we would not have the sort of clean sweep of National Party ideology, and we'd actually have some considered discourse about the ramifications of such uh, policy change. So at the end of this point, we think we've proven to you that we get better lawmaking. Finally, moving on to this last point on why we get a better executive government. We think this works in two ways. Firstly, because the PM can pick from the entire parliament. This is simply a number game, numbers game, Madam Speaker, because at the moment they're limited to those in their coalition or in their government. That is why we have idiots like Tracy Martin being a minister under the current government. And this is why the Attorney General is also the Minister for Trade. We think we get far better people when instead of only choosing out of 60 people, they can choose out of 120. Secondly, we get better executive because, because the ex there's a greater scrutiny of the executive government by the rest of the government. We think that when only 20, M 20 MPs who are part of this cabinet are held by collective responsibility, the whole parliament has the ability to criticise these people rather than only the 60s on side opposition. Because of this, we are inherently proud to propose.